Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I want you uh, to conclude by seeking your indulgence to consider the following, which relates to the issue of um, inequality and poverty that I addressed earlier. Just a short while ago, the World Bank suggested a possible scenario in which Malaysia reaches high income status as soon as to 2024. In its calculation, there is a mere $1.335 gap between current GNI per capita and the threshold for being high income. I've never been overtly obsessed with GDPs, even when I was finance minister, because GDP targets is quite constrained and limited in understanding. The real conditions for most Malaysians today are absolutely problematic. The high income status is a meaningless concept for them. 75% of Malaysians are unable to master 1,000 ringgit for an emergency. I repeat, 75% of Malaysians are unable to master 1,000 ringgit for an emergency. The majority of Malaysians will run out of cash within one week if they lose access to their income, meaning the majority of Malaysians have less than one month of available cash reserve in case of a loss of employment. And now uh, the unemployment rate has gone to about close to 800,000 and close to 16% among youth, 16% unemployment among youth. That's why they are resisting this undi lapan blas. You can't suggest that they are not ready. If you are truly incompetent, whether the election commission and the government, they have to go. I mean, you take one year to decide you have decided this more than a year ago, one and a half years ago. And now, after one and a half years, we said we are not ready. Sheer incompetence and dereliction of duty. The majority of Malaysians aged 20, 20, uh, 20, 29 are earning an average median salary of under 2,000 ringgit per month. The income gap between Bumiputras and Chinese has more than doubled in 10 years. In 2009, the Bumi Chinese gap was only 1,387 ringgit, but now the gap has increased to 2,802 ringgit. The gap between Bumiputras and Indians have also widened recently. In 2009, the gap was only 375 ringgit, but now has increased to 1,123 ringgit. So it is really uh, disconcerting, worrying among the Indians, then the Bimiputras and the Chinese. Now, why do I choose to say this? Because at times when we talk about multiracial agenda, we tend to forget that the Malay-based parties will use these figures because you don't address them. That is why I say, to alleviate this problem, to deal with this issue, we have then to make it clear and pronounce. Malay, Chinese, or Indians, or Sabahans, or Sarawakians, particularly the elites, business community, to say that we must address the issue of poverty, irrespective of race. Because otherwise, the rest will then choose this narrative, and it is really appealing. I would use it to say that's why we need to move on from the new economic policy, because it has failed. It has also failed the movie put us. But then we must then introduce a new economic agenda, or Malaysian economic agenda, that can appeal to the vast majority of our people Bumiputras and non Bumiputras, and to showcase a policy that transcends race, 
There will be some form of gap, acceptable, but this atrocious difference cannot be defended. How do you uh, suggest to, I mean, the Indian leaders uh, to ignore this problem because they are in, this, I mean, in a, such a despair because the gap is astounding. Now, 77% of all, how all households earning below 2,000 ringgit are Bhumiputras. 77% of all households earning below 2,000 ringgit are Bhumiputras. Okay. Of course, I, my retort to this will be easy. Yet, you have a Malay government talking about Malay supremacy, which effectively sir, means their supremacy their wealth and their power, not the vast majority of the Malays. 